Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Adam Fuchs. I am a product engineer at Canis Design Systems and this is part one of the Orcadix Capture tutorial series. This video series is going to focus on the new features available in Orcadix Capture as of the 23.1 release and my goal is to guide you to create your first library parts in the new component library to draw a schematic from start to finish using the available commands and also how to generate schematic exports like your BOM or the netlist so that you can continue into layout. Let's go ahead and get started. Now if you want to follow along you can do so by downloading the supporting files at any point in the video series so don't worry if you need to skip a video or you need to go back or you can simply follow the general steps in your own design environment. Okay, to begin, launch Orcadex Capture from either the start menu or double click the desktop shortcut. For this series of videos, I will be using the Orcad X professional license. I'm gonna go ahead and select that here and then hit okay. And we should see Orcad X launched. Let's go ahead and create a new project. To do so, there's two options. You can either click the new shortcut on the start page or go to file new project. They both bring up the same pop-up. Now, if you're familiar with Orcadex Capture, you might notice that there's an additional option here at the bottom called use workspace. Now, this option only appears if you've logged into the Orcadex cloud. Hopefully you saw that the first time you launched your Orcadex Capture window. Mine by default didn't show because I'm already logged in. What this means to use the workspace is to use the available storage in the Orcad X Cloud environment to save our projects, our libraries, and any of the parts in our libraries. What that allows you to do is to always have access to it no matter which computer you log in from or which machine you use to design your projects. Now, when you select this use workspace, the location on your computer is grayed out. And that's just because the Orcadex workspace is just going to use the default workspace folder that you can find here. We'll talk about that more in the next video. For now, go ahead and just type in a name for your project. I'm gonna call mine how to, and then press okay to create the project. Once the project is created, you'll notice that it automatically opens up the page one of your schematic. Before we start creating any library parts or doing any drawing, let's just do a quick overview of the different panels available in Orcadex Capture. So on the right side here is your project panel. Notice here that you can have access to all of the different files associated with your project, like the different layout files will be placed here, outputs will be placed here, and you can click these pluses and minuses to expand or collapse any of these submenus. Likewise, if you have any hierarchy in your design, there's a tab at the top here that you can select to inspect the hierarchy. Now, any of these tabs, you can click and reorganize anywhere into your workspace. I like to keep mine as default, so let's just go ahead and do that. At the bottom here, you'll notice is a couple helper windows. So we have our online DRCs. These are basically any sort of errors that might appear in our design will automatically be displayed here. We have the command window, which is a TCL or Tickle interpreter for any sort of automation that you want to include in your project. And then finally, the session log. This is basically where you'll see any sort of errors or information that needs to be displayed. It'll just be added here and you can scroll through and read that. Okay, at the top here, we have a couple menu items accessible through the menu bar. You can click any of these and see what is available. Don't worry if it's a little bit overwhelming at first. One thing Orcadix Capture does is it will gray out any options that are not available in the current context. So for example, some of these exports will be disabled because, well, we're not working with an FPGA design right now. Likewise, as we go through these tutorials, we'll only be using a certain subset of the commands available. A lot of these other might be some advanced commands or ones that you simply don't need if you're just creating a schematic design. At the top here, there's a couple icons. These are basically just quick access icons to the same commands that you can access through the menu at the top here. And likewise on the right side here, 
almost all of these commands are the same ones that you can find in the place menu. So things like place part, place component, wire, bus, these are all quickly accessible through here. Okay, so we familiarized ourselves with the general user interface. Before we start creating any parts or doing any drawing on our schematic, let's go ahead and set up some defaults. So right now we have an A size page, which is just a little small for what we want to use. And you'll notice that at the bottom we have a title block that has a title, a document number, a revision, and some of these fields can either be edited manually or we can set up some defaults so that they're always entered in for us. So if I look at the bottom here, title property here, if I want to just edit a single instance of this title property, I can just go ahead and double click on it. And you'll notice that we get this pop up which says that we can change the name of the title property and set the value to, for example, how to video. There's some additional font options on the right here if you want to change that, but I already have my default set. So see that the title got changed to how to video. Now, if we were to add a new page, we would have to then enter that in manually again, which can become quite tedious. So let's take a look at how to change that default. Go into the options at the top and select design template. From the design template window, go into the title block tab and let's set our title to how to underscore videos. If your title block supports things like the organization name and the organization address, maybe a cage code, you can fill that information in as well. For now, I'm just going to set the document number to 1.0 and the revision to A. If you want to change which title block you're using, you can access it through the install hierarchy and tools, capture, library, and then there's a library called capsib.olb, but we won't worry about that for now. Let's just continue to use this title block zero. And then I also want to change the default page size. So in the page size tab, I'm just going to select B and press OK. Now. Those are defaults that will only be used as we add more pages into the design. To do so, in the project panel on the left here, go ahead and expand schematic one. You'll notice that we only have one page called page one right now. I can right click here and select new page. It's gonna be called page two and press okay. Now if I open page two, you'll notice that right away the page is larger and that some of that additional information that we entered into our design template is automatically filled in here for us. Things like the date that will automatically be set by the tool and the sheet numbers. So right now page two is showing sheet one of one that will be actually set in the annotation step, which we'll talk about later. Now, if we want to edit page one, we have a couple options. One is that we can right click on page one and select schematic page properties and manually set the page size as well as if we want to change anything about the grid or miscellaneous options, we can do so here. But instead, what we're going to go ahead and do is simply delete our page one, use our page two as our new page one. To rename our page two, do a right click and select rename. Instead of using the page one name, I'm actually gonna call this the power page as we're going to have three pages in our schematic. For this schematic, we're gonna have a power page and let's go ahead and add the two other pages. There's gonna be a micro page for the microprocessor and then one more page for the peripherals. Now at any point we can actually reorder these pages if we need to, but for now, let's go ahead and save all of these pages. Now we can also change a couple other things before we get started, like what our canvas looks like. To do so, go up into the options and select preferences. 
Here in the preferences, the first tab is called colors slash print. I personally like to use the dark application theme as well as schematic theme. And then I've also changed a couple of the colors here. For example, my wires, I like to be this lime green color, as well as a couple of the properties you'll notice will be displayed in orange. And then most of the other colors are either a blue or a white. And that keeps things nice and simple. You can go through a couple of these other tabs, for example, the pan and zoom behavior, how the grids are displayed in the project. And if you wanna find out more about any of these options, Click help here in the bottom right corner or simply visit the Cadence support portal and type in your query there. So let's click OK. All right, now our project is set up and we're ready to start adding some library parts. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll add some parts from third party providers and we'll even create our own custom part. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and thanks for watching.